Item number 31 is resolution number 2013-R47. That's to reserve the decision of the Commission of Architectural Review, which denied certificate of appropriateness for vinyl replacement windows on a home located at 2916 Monument Avenue. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, Council, on this paper? Very good. Are there any persons which wish to speak in opposition to this paper? If there are, I'd ask you to please line, make a line up on the microphone. Please understand that the Council is proceeding to file 30 minutes on either opposition or in favor. And usually that time is divided by three minutes per person. If you hear someone say something that you believe you are also going to say, and you feel it is appropriate, simply do that. Please do so, and therefore we will give everybody at least as many people as possible an opportunity to speak. The first person who is in opposition to this paper, please step forward, introduce yourself, and tell us what you think. My name is Donald Hatcher. I'm really amazed at the spirit who has all already in place that says certain things can't be done, and people do it, and then run back into City Hall, and they have a problem with City Hall okaying what should be okayed. Why is it that this city, when you pass laws, those laws can't be carried out as to how they should be carried out? I have a serious problem, because a lot of times the city comes and wants to enact certain laws on me that shouldn't be. And I just took part in a neighbor dropping a tree on my house that done damage, and that's still with me. I've got a lawyer working on trying to fix the court, but the city of Michigan carried me to court. The policeman that goes over the city, I don't have no explanation for it, but if the law is already in place, why are we talking about changing something? Because somebody's done something wrong. So okay, they're doing wrong. And I've seen this done in Michigan many times. This council needs to look out for the interests of all people in the city, not a select few. And I've got a real problem. I'm dying people can sit here and keep okaying stuff that ain't supposed to be okay. But that just doesn't make sense to me. You write a law, one person, he's going to get justified, another person, if he's got some money to spend or whatnot, he can go hire a lawyer. And the foolishness in this city just keeps going on. When are we going to stop it? If the law says it can't be done, it's already done, why don't you go put limits on the house that ain't supposed to be there? You ain't that stupid. And for this to continue to go on in this city, and people who are less, have money to do things and try to get away with it, they get punished. If you got no law, follow the law. Don't keep on making exceptions where people can do what they want to do. I remember when we had black people in Walmart, but I got to be a concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Commission did not violate Section 114-930.6 of the Code and states that the Commission is entitled to reject an application for a COA if it finds that the application is not in compliance with the Code for all the support districts. It did not violate Section 114-930.7a. It says that the support character of each all the support district shall be the primary consideration of the Commission in reviewing the proposed design for the district. It didn't violate Section 114-930.7b. It states that the Commission has the authority to issue certificates of appropriateness to the rehabilitation of the property if it finds that the proposed change is compatible with the property and the support district of which it's a part. So if you take a look at the Code, the same thing with legislation, the oath is worn by members of the Council before they take their service. They're all in support of district guidelines that are consistent with national preservation standards. They were recently vetted and found laudable by City Council through your task force study of the Commission. The seated members of the Commission of Architectural Review could not responsibly have reached any other decision in their review and consistent application of their standards. We all know that Monument Avenue is historic, and I think we all appreciate that Monument Avenue is a gem in our city. It's got a seal of historic district status. It has a national register of historic status, which means it's eligible for tax credits. But I also want you to be aware that it is a national historic landmark, and those are very rare throughout the country. There are only 121 in the state of Virginia. So I would encourage you to protect this very important district and not to be rude to the character of the district. Ms. Wright, can you state your name for the record? Catherine Easterly. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you have on staff. Thank you, Ms. Easterly. I think what we'll do is let everybody speak in favor and opposition to any questions that you have. We'll call them in the record. Thank you, Ms. Easterly. Good evening. I'm Julie Langen, Deputy Director for Preservation Programs at the Virginia Department of Historic Resources. As you deliberate on the resolution before you, I request that you consider the following. Developed by the National Park Service, the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, upon which the old and historic district guidelines are based, have been the industry standards since 1977. The standards are intended as best practices for use throughout the country on all types of buildings. They are not technical, but are intended to promote responsible treatment practices through a common-sense approach. Because the standards are general in nature, local communities often develop guidelines to complement these standards, taking into account the building type found in a particular district. The standards, as well as the guidelines, are tried and true in preservation tools. They have a long history of use, with effective results throughout the country. Because windows are one of a building's most important character-defining features, the National Park Service has recently been tightening up its application of the standards when it comes to window replacement. Indeed, to be in compliance with the standards, a window replacement must meet two tests. One, the historic windows cannot be repaired. And two, the new windows should match the historic. Another point that I'd like to make is that Richmond, the city whose past and future is unquestionably intertwined with historic preservation, needs to hold on to and protect the tools at its disposal to preserve the historic neighborhoods that contribute so significantly to the city's opportunity for heritage, tourism, and economic development. More than any other city in Virginia, Richmond has benefited from the programs whose very existence depends on the enforcement of the Secretary's standards. For example, there have been 1,159 certified rehabilitation tax credit projects in Richmond, all of which had to follow the standards. These projects have leveraged almost 1.5 million, excuse me, billion, billion dollars of private investment. Look around Richmond today, and the majority of development projects under construction are utilizing the tax credit program and are, therefore, complying with the same standards on which the old and historic district guidelines are modeled. In closing, the Virginia Department of Historic Resources 
encourage the city council to uphold the use of the secretary's standards and the old and historic district guidelines so that these tools can continue to guide the city and its property owners towards appropriate preservation practices. Thank you very much. My name is Mary Jane Ho, the Executive Director of the Historic Christian Foundation. I would like for the record to reflect tonight that I am submitting a packet to the City Clerk, which includes City Code Section Substantiating CAR's Authority, the Richmond Old and Historic District Handbook and Design Guidelines, excerpts from the Old Historic and District Handbook Substantiating CAR's authority and approved material. The Department of Historic Resources FYI number six about synthetic siting. Department of Historic FYI resource number three, retrofitting historic windows. 
the mass petition in support of the CAR decision. And the 2012 Annapolis, Maryland Preservation Commission case study regarding retroactive application. We sent this this morning, but I'd like to formally introduce it into the record tonight. Uh, I am here to urge the council to support CAR and deny resolution 2013R47. I direct you to the city code which supports the Commission of Architectural Review's decision to deny a certificate of appropriateness for 2016 Monument Avenue. Section 114-930.3 states in part that the CAR shall have the power and authority to issue or deny certificates for alterations within an old and historic district. Section 114-930.6 addresses the requirement for a certificate of appropriateness. It states in part that no building shall be altered within an old and historic district unless it is approved with a certificate of appropriateness. No building permit to alter any building shall be issued unless the applicant has first obtained the certificate of appropriateness. The homeowner did not obtain a building permit nor a certificate of appropriateness in this case. The building permit is an essential tool for the commission and staff in order to trigger unlawful alterations. Again, I ask that your decision tonight is based on city code and the procedures and processes of CAR. Please do not punish those who have lawfully followed the process while rewarding those that don't. Our mayor said he wants to be a world class city. One of the discerning national attributes are our authentic and historic buildings. Monument Avenue is a nationally recognized tree. If we can't afford the National Park Service Secretary of Interior Standards to this tree, we are setting a huge precedent. HRF would love for you to consider postponing this tonight until you can absorb all the technicalities. And HRF offers a to treat you to breakfast, lunch, or dinner so that you can discern in the future about what is local, what is state, what is a federal law with the National Secretary of Historic, Historic Interior uh, thing, because I think there's confusion and it is a lot of technicality. And I would love you to ask who is here tonight to support the CAR. My name is Joanne McDonald, and I am a homeowner in the first district, just outside of the Northern Historic District. I relocated to the city 13 years ago because of its unique architectural landscape. This landscape has been preserved due to the creation of our city's old historic districts. These districts were created to protect the physical record of our history. As a citizen, I wish my neighborhood had these safeguards in my neighborhood. The Commission of Architecture Review is charged with maintaining the authenticity of the historic architecture as stipulated in the old and historic district guidelines and city code provisions. The work of CAR has been instrumental in protecting the historic properties and the physical record of our city sister. CAR is responsible to ensure the integrity, the craftsmanship, and the character to be retained in the district. In 2009, 2010, the Council Task Force reviewed and affirmed CAR's process and procedures. This recent review affirmed CAR's process and its procedures and upheld CAR's efforts to review all exterior changes within the district, keeping the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. In 2012, CAR reviewed 119 applications and only denied nine. The process is working and effective. Upon the review of the resolution regarding 2916 Monument Avenue, I urge you to uphold CAR's decision to deny a certificate of appropriateness. The work of CAR is crucial to maintain the impact that the old and historic districts had on our city. The benefits of preserving the integrity of the district has tremendous financial benefits. Monument Avenue, historic district, 
district alone generates four million dollars in tax revenue for the city. In addition, the district has become a tourist destination, producing substantial revenue for our city. All the districts are an asset in the Virginia Film Office. The city's historic environment has demonstrated to attract this additional revenue stream. An additional benefit is the proper maintenance of our historic building stock. It's significant support to provide our local labor and craftsmen. We must maintain the standard of grandeur of our historic districts. If we do not, Richmond will endure economic and architectural ramifications because we fail to provide the necessary protection to safeguards. The historical integrity must not be compromised. I urge you to support your commission and the city president. If you approve this resolution, please inform your citizens how far aired in this case. You have taken that Please. Thank you very much. My name is Kathleen Morgan, and I am speaking as a citizen of Richmond, specifically a citizen of Monument Avenue, Old and Historic District. I live at 3115 Monument Avenue, the first apartment building built in the district. Monument Avenue has nationally recognized significance, being that it is a national historic landmark as well as a national historic district. The many pieces make up that history and architecture, which then allows the district to speak to its past. The architectural features of Monument Avenue are what hold it all together. It is the windows, the porches, the columns, the roof lines, the materials that helps to display its richness and thus its desirability. And it is CAR to whom we owe the protection and maintenance of our historic resources, ensuring the reason that I and others who move to this neighborhood is kept intact. I would like to reference the Old Historic District Guidelines, where it states on page 2, by the authority of the city code, no external changes to a property in an Old Historic District, other than routine maintenance, can be made without obtaining a certificate of appropriateness. Furthermore, on page 4, the most widely used standards and guidelines in the United States for the rehabilitation of historic structures and historic districts are the Secretary of the Interior's Standards for Rehabilitation, and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings. The CAR has adopted the following national standards. I will just mention a few of the standards. Deteriorated historic features shall be repaired rather than replaced. When the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature, the new feature shall match the old in design, color, texture, and other visual qualities, and where possible materials. Unfortunately, there is an all too common misconception that historic wood windows are inefficient. According to the Virginia Department of Historic Resources, stated in FYI number three, in which you already have, I quote, a variety of retrofit techniques can provide a historic window with thermal efficiency equaling or exceeding that of typical replacement window units. These methods are generally less expensive than wholesale treatment. Replacement, excuse me. And lastly, I will refer back to the guidelines on page 75 that the most important aspect of preservation is maintenance and repair. With proper attention, the life of Richmond's historic buildings can be extended for generations. Through careful selection of materials and repair techniques, historic buildings can be preserved appropriately and economically, avoiding the necessity of major costly rehabilitations in the future. The most expensive repairs are those that must be made twice. It is with this evidence and these facts that I ask you to vote against this appeal and trust and respect your CAR. Many of the four have followed the law, but the property owner did not. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, fellow city council. Thank you. My name is Kevin Gates. I'm a member of the Commission of Architectural Review, President of Monument Avenue, and a practicing architect in the city of Richmond for almost 20 years. Thank you. 
read the preservation briefs or a pair of historic wooden windows, which is in my file that I took out this morning. I'd like to introduce the application to Carl and approve my application. And after all that, about three years later, I was going to replace the steps leading up to my house. I could have easily just gone and replaced them. I said to myself, I live in the historic district, I must maintain the standards of the historic district. So I again went through the whole process of car to replace the treads on my front steps. So I could have easily ignored the rules, and I didn't. Therefore, I would like to introduce you to prove that an individual will spend considerable sums maintaining their housing in historic districts up to a high standard. Uh, probably a higher standard would be considered more. Hence, any actions by yourselves to condemn final windows in a historic yeah, district will immediately send will immediately send the wrong signal to current potential investment in historic districts. I'm Wayne Rawls. I'm the uh, resident of Church Hill. Uh, I'm the chairman of the Church Hill Association Zoning Committee. I'm going to speak to you as an individual who has uh, spent a lot of money on my house um, working with the car regulations and the Department of Historic Resources on the tax credits. I urge that you uh, hold the car on two uh, grounds. The first one is economic, the second is political. On the economic basis, uh, we have all seen the improvements in the city of Richmond uh, because, in large part, of these tax credit programs. $1.5 billion has been spent. Uh, but look at also the, the other expenditures to improve the tax base in the city of Richmond. Uh, this is made for market improvements. Look at uh, Chicago Bottom as an example of what has happened with the tobacco warehouses. All of it approves the benefit of all of us as citizens of Richmond. This is not an isolated case for one person on one street. The second is political. Uh, you here on city council need to decide or do you believe in a, the rule of law or the rule of politics. Each one of you have been lobbied, been lobbied heavily. You've gotten dozens of emails and phone calls. That's what happens when you abandon the rule of law. There are rules and regulations. You pass the rules, we're supposed to abide by them. When we don't, and it turns to a political process, what you get is lobbying, and we abide by who do you know and what influence do they have rather than what do the law say. Thank you very much. I hope you uh, both know on this resolution and support the law. Thank you, President.
Judging Council members on Bill Montgomery and over the 2000 blocks on Avenue. Our family moved here about two and a half years ago from the Detroit District of Long Island, Alexandria. One of the reasons was because of car and the tax and provided so. Our house is beautiful, one of the reasons we bought the house. And I think it would be a shame if the president was to tell us where other homes along the Bureau of Trade could have found one of those. I mean, he's trying to create the most horrible if we did that. Thank you. Mr. President, members of council, my name is Mark Connell. I'm a resident of Monument Avenue, speaking as a citizen. My wife and I renovated the house of Monument five years ago, converting an undocumented apartment building back into a single family home. Uh, we went to the CAR three times for different cases. We went because it's the rules and because it's the process that this council established. I urge you to stand behind the Commission of Architecture Review and stand behind the process. This council established and behind the process that all the other homeowners on Monument Avenue who make renovations and invest in Monument adhere to and follow uh, continually. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this one, Mr. Whitfield, you're welcome to speak. At this point, I'm going to have to cut it off for 30 minutes. And if you, um, we're going to finish just long enough for one more. Mr. President, members of the council, my name is Roger Whitfield. I'm here speaking as a citizen, although I am the president of the Fan District Association. The Fan District Association, or myself as a representative of the Fan District Association, expressing our solidarity with the Match Association in support of the Commission on Architectural Review. That's why we're here. We believe we are held as a common cause for historic neighborhoods, and we encourage you to uh, say no to this particular paper. Thank you. 
concerns for over this property that I sit down with the applicants and talk to the applicants uh, for individuals involved in the property in that area. One was a parking lot that had been paved over, and we had to deal with that. Fortunately, it didn't get to council because it was handled properly. The second was a uh, replacement of windows, and in this case, a substantial number of replacement of windows. It actually went to the CAR, the CAR uh, reviewed it and uh, came away with the same ruling that you have going on tonight. The applicant didn't talk with me, and I said, as a counselor, I'm going to support the CAR on this matter. It never came to this body, final windows. So I want you to understand this is not the first time this has happened. It's important to protect this district. I would suggest that as you go forward with this, that we need to look for solutions when someone makes a mistake. And I believe the two papers in front of you tonight, even four or against, and perhaps a third should be looked at, and that is one that would allow the applicant to leave the windows in place for a short period of time until they have a substantial financial needs to replace, replace the windows with the proper windows, particularly on Monument Avenue first, and then last but not least on the side street. I know there's approximately 16 windows there, and there's several in the, in the rear. But at the end of the day, we need to protect Thank you.